Okay, so, you know, one of the ways that we end up using promises is that when we have some sort of process of doing one thing after the other. Up to this point, we've been using callbacks for everything that we're doing. Now, it's important to note that there's two flavors of these callbacks, right? Some callbacks are blocking and some callbacks are non-blocking. Now, let's just think about the ones that are blocking. You're going to recognize these right off the bat. When we look at um, any of our reduce functions, uh, any of our filter functions, all those have callbacks, okay? But they're not asynchronous, okay? So if you were to go and look at someone's code and you saw that it had a callback, you really don't know whether or not that's going to be something that's asynchronous unless you know a little bit more about the code, right? So, I mean, these, some of these, um, when we end up thinking about, you know, things that are blocking, right, for what we've been looking at, these are more of, you know, iterator methods that we're using to do this. When we think about non-blocking, we could sort of think about control flow. So, I mean, you know, I mentioned this before. When you click on a button, when does that function get called? Well, at some point in the future, when the user ends up clicking on the button. When we end up using middleware, we do app.use, or we end up using creating an express route, when do those callbacks get called? Depends when someone ends up browsing to the page. Um, the ones that we're sort of thinking of here that we end up using promises for are these scenarios where we've got these what are called vanilla async methods, right? These are uh, asynchronous callbacks where something is, is delayed, okay? It's not like the button click where we say, hey, it might happen, it might not happen. We do expect in some reasonable time period that we're going to be able to either find out that we're able to read from the file or we weren't, okay? But we don't want to end up basically blocking the I.O. in order to do it. So again, we're given this callback and somewhere in this uh, uh, FS library, there's some other thread and, uh, you know, when we end up getting the result, it's added to the event loop and we know at some point in the future, right, we're either going to be able to find out whether or not we were successful or not. So, you know, we've got this blocking and non-blocking and the ones that we're interested in are the vanilla async. Again, think about reading from a file. So, you know, here's an example where we end up calling set timeout and this is not going to work, right? It's not going to work to assume when we call set timeout, if we do console.log result, what's going to end up showing up here in result? Undefined, right? And that happens first. I mean, even if you do a, a set timeout of zero, okay, this is a callback. It's a non-blocking uh, callback. Here's another scenario, right? And I, I've mentioned this before, right? When do we return things from what I would say is asynchronous callback functions. When do we return things? When we want to get the heck out of there, right? Cleaned it up, recording, okay? When we want to get out of there, we end up doing that. So, you know, if we have an error or whatever, right, return the callback with the error, okay? Um, but doing this solves nothing because, again, console.log result is going to be, and in fact, console.log result here is just going to tell you you have a function. That's all that is, right? What you really want to do is do things within the function. Get your result and then console.log the result, right? That's going to end up working. So what the promise represents is the eventual result of an asynchronous operation. Again, think about the promise that I created to return to read that file, okay? Again, it's eventually going to get read. And how do we get the eventual result? Well, a promise has that very important method called then, and you could end up using it. So if we had some, um, uh, here we've got read file. Um, and if we had some asynchronous method to read a file that, you know, returned a promise, one way we could end up dealing with that is by actually passing in two functions, okay? You can imagine if this worked, we could actually pass in two functions and say, look, do me a favor. I don't want to pass in a callback function. Instead, I'm going to have a then method. And you know something? I'm going to give you two functions. If, in fact, you were successful, call the success one. 
if you're not successful, call the error one. So what would that end up looking like? Well, if we had this sort of permissified set timeout, where again, we're not passing in a callback function. Instead, if we had this permissified version of a callback, again, this would be incorrect, right? This would be the same thing. We'd end up getting it back undefined. On the same token, this would be incorrect as well. If we had this permissified version of a timeout, again, we would end up in some period of time, right? This callback function inside of the then would end up getting called, and we could then log out the result. So again, in terms of the spec, right, a promise represents the uh, eventual result of an asynchronous operation, and there's two different specifications for promises. I don't really know the nitty-gritty between them. Uh, Gabe, who ended up coming up with the workshop to actually create a promise library, could definitely answer your questions and uh, tell you a little bit more about it. But let's actually just think about a couple of examples here, just in terms of the order. So one of the things you can do, we don't often do it, but you have a way of reading a file where you could say, hey, look, you know what? Don't do it on another thread. I'm waiting. Okay? So you could have this method called read file sync that's blocking. And what you could end up doing here is say, hey, look, here's my poem. This is going to get logged first. And in fact, we're going to sit there and wait until we have the results of our file, and the console.log is going to happen last. Now, again, we don't do this too often because it's blocking, and you sort of want to avoid that sort of scenario. If we think about a callback, a callback scenario is what we actually did. Here's the path of our file, right? Either we're going to get back an error, or again, this is a buffer because that's why I always do two string on the file, uh, because if you don't do that, you'll see a bunch of, uh, I think, hex numbers or something like that. Um, but again, if you have an error, you could say console log error. If not, you could do take the buffer and do it to a string. Again, what I might do, if I didn't have this line down here, console.log on last, I would probably say if error, you know, return console.error, okay? This way you could avoid the else. But in this case, you want to have the IM last there as well. So again, you're going to have the IM first because, again, you're not blocking here. Um, now, another scenario would be if you had this permissified version. Now, you're going to end up creating a permissified version of read file, and you're going to do it by having a function and by creating promises. Okay, So you're going to use a promise library. You're going to have a function that wraps around the promise library. That's what this workshop ends up doing. You're going to have some time to do this. So what this will end up doing is that you're going to read from a file, and then you're going to have a then, which is going to allow you to deal with, and again, this is, I didn't really do this, but you, promises allow you to do this. When you have a then, you could pass in two functions to it. The first function is for success. The second function is for an error. Okay, so you might want to do that if you did want to go and maybe recover gracefully from an error and do something, you could always end up doing that. Um, but again, this would give you the results of um, you'd have I am first, you would end up logging out, either you were able to read the poem or you weren't, and then you would end up getting an error. So one thing about this is that promises are actually portable. So one of the things you could end up doing with this promise is that if you have a, this promise to read from a file, you could actually pass this promise into a function. Now, again, keep in mind, okay, keep in mind in this do something function that's accepting a promise, I would expect in that do something function to see the word then at some point, okay? It wouldn't make a lot of sense if you didn't see the word then because, in fact, You'd never be able to do anything with the results. But again, you could pass in this promise to this function, and you could also export this promise to use it somewhere else. Another thing that you could end up doing is that if you have this promise, okay, and again, we sort of saw this with the example as well, where we ended up having a promise. You could have a promise and do something with the 
file contents, and then you could do something else with it as well. So one of these things with these promises is once you end up having them, they're portable. You could end up reusing them. You could end up passing them around. You can't do that with callback functions. There's no method to end up doing that. You'd have to maybe save the results and you know, store them somewhere and then do something with them. The other thing, and we've seen this before, is where you could flatten things. So if you wanted to read two different files, although this would work, where you're reading a file, right, and you're going to end up logging the results, and then you're going to log you know, some results from file two, you don't need to do this. Because one of the things you could do with promises is that you could return a promise inside of a then, and then chain it to the next then. Okay? How does it work? Well, that's just the way the promise library works. Promise library says, hey, look, did you return something from a then? Is it another promise? I'm not going to call the next then until that promise ends up getting resolved. You also have this idea of unified error handling. So one of the things you could do is this is one way to do this, where you could basically you know, read this file, read the next file, read a third file, and then you see this last then. So what this last then says, hey, look, I'm not interested about in success. I'm just interested in if you have an error. Instead of doing this, if you saw in the demo, I would favor using the catch there. I think it reads a little bit better, but that's what that catch ends up doing. So again, I did say that the then takes a success handler. It also takes an optional um, failure handler as well. So the advantages, they're portable. You could use multiple handlers. You could flatten things, and you've got unified error handling. And once you start using promises, if someone gives you code where you have to do a callback, you're going to start cursing them out because this is going to make a heck of a lot more sense. Now, having said that, promises are basically a specification. Um, and there's different implementations of promises. So it's a specification. This is how a promise should work. Okay? Different libraries end up implementing them differently. The one that you saw was Bluebird. The other one you're going to see is Potential, which is the one you're going to be creating yourself once we end up getting into another, another lecture. Um, so that's it. I'm, I will end up opening up the workshop. Let me just stop the recording here.